So we're gonna be trimming plates today. You can look at my last video if you wanna see how the plates were thrown, but we're gonna be trimming the dinner plates. Um, it might sound a little rough. I've had a sore throat and a cold the last few days. Um, hey, so we threw the plates yesterday and it's the next morning and I wanna take a look at the plates and see if they're ready to cut off the bats and then flip over. I can touch the centers of the plates it's not leaving clay on my hands, but it's still, you can tell, it's a little hard. Let me see if I can get the, you can see that I'm still leaving very slight marks from my hands on the clay. The rims though, are starting to get pretty set up. They don't wanna bend with the rest of the piece. So the rims are leather hard and the center is, um, in between like wet clay and leather hard, so very soft. Um, these ones which I threw yesterday uh, in the morning are definitely ready to flip. So these are gonna get cut off and then flipped upside down so they can dry. So with the one-sided masonite bats that I use for plates, um, I want to make sure I'm scraping them clean. So I just cut a plate off of this one and then I just use a big uh, four inch putty knife and I like the really stiff putty knives to cut off the extra, scrape it off. And then I'm just stacking these off to the side and I'm stacking them front to front, back to back. So they get stacked like this. And then the next set will get stacked like this. And then I usually set like a bag or a box of clay on the top of them on a flat surface. Um, and that way, cause they're every other, that's gonna force them to dry a little flatter. So that it helps prevent some warping. There's a little bit of warping with these, but it definitely helps uh, reduce the warping. So I find that it's easier to cut them off uh, once the rim, there we go, once the rim's that leather hard. Um, and then if you forgot to undercut your bottom here, take just a really tiny little trimming tool, like something like this. Uh, this is a Dolan 450. That'll reach under there. And I'm gonna try to do it on this side so you can see it. And just, and this doesn't have to be perfect. There we go. Just take off a little bit of extra clay on the bottom because um, it's going to help you get your, your wire through. So this is like a pretty heavy duty wire. Um, for a lot of my stuff, I really like these Dirty Girls wires. The thinner ones are super nice. I don't have a long thin one. Um, so that's why I'm using the heavier duty, which is a little thicker. Um, so all I'm doing is I'm setting it right across from me. And I'm holding it, um, depends on the size of your hands. My hands won't fit underneath here because that's too wide. So a lot of times I'll grab it just with two fingers. And then my thumb is going to go on top. So I can pull this really tight, really easily. And my thumb is going to press down on the top of the bat so that this stays as close to the bottom as possible. And then you want to keep it nice and tight, nice and tight. So I'm starting on the back side. And I'm just gonna give it a real slow turn to start with. So I make sure I'm up underneath there. And that's why the undercut's really helpful because it helps get this up underneath the, the lip of this. And then I'm just pulling my arms apart and pressing down with my thumbs and then slowly moving it towards me. And you'll see when it gets loose, the wheel keeps spinning and usually the, the plate stops. When I go to lift up the plate, I'm gonna pick it up from opposite sides 
and then flip it vertically. So I can carry it like this. And what this does is that most of the weight is on in my left hand. Uh, my right hand's just helping it balance. And since this is the really the thickest part of the plate, it's not gonna wanna taco or bend. Uh, and then I'm gonna go set it on my table. These are a little soft to flip over right now, so I'm gonna set them right side up and then in about an hour or two, I'll flip them over. So when I go to set them down, I'm gonna pay attention to where on the plate I'm holding it. I'm gonna set that down. And I was lifting this direction, so then I'm just gonna grab it opposite and straighten it out with everything else. Um, in case you had some warpage there, that's gonna kind of counteract the any sort of warpage that you have. These are gonna sit here for about an hour, uh, just so this can set up a little more, and then I'm gonna come back and I'm gonna flip them upside down like the plates I have over here, so that the rims don't dry out a whole bunch more, but the centers can get to a soft leather hard. Uh, basically, you just want them so they're not gonna have much give right in the center. Uh, so we can get those cleaned up. So the plates that I threw, since I haven't been in the studio the last couple days, um, I covered everything with a piece of plastic so things wouldn't dry out too much. These are just a hair dryer um, than what I typically trim, but they're still pretty good for trimming. They're not throwing dust everywhere quite yet. All right, so hopefully this top view will work pretty well for everybody to see what's going on. So um, the important thing here is to get this centered to start with. Um, so this is firm enough where it's not, you know, bending too much. I'm handling it as little as possible and as gently as possible. Really the key to not warping plates is to handle them as little as possible. So. I need to get this centered. I'm used to tap centering. Um, I should post a video about tap centering. I'll probably do that sometime, uh, hopefully soon. This is pretty close to centered. And when I'm tap centering, I always wanna be watching the shoulder of the piece, not actually this part right here, which is where people are tempted, where you uh, you know undercut it. That can get a little off center when you're undercutting. The rim can be off center. So I always think about the shoulder of the piece when I'm tap centering. And there we go. And then I've got some clay that I'll use some lugs. The other nice thing about lugs is I can trim all the way to the edge and it just cuts clay off of the lug and it doesn't get in my way at all. So I'm supporting the left side and when I push down, I'm pushing into the wheel head. I'm not pushing into the pot. That's even more important if you've got a softer piece. That's still centered, we're good there. So um, smaller pieces, I'll just use three lugs. These wider plates, um, I like using four. I feel like it's a little better hold. And using slightly stiffer clay is sometimes nice for these lugs that doesn't give as much. All right, so the two tools that you'll see me using uh, these are both Dolan tools, 360 and the, the 370 is this nice one. And I use the smaller version of this too for a lot of my trimming. I'm starting with this and I'm going to use this to remove most of it. Um, for my first, I know that this is about a little less than a quarter inch thick or uh, about probably three eighths of an inch, a little more than a quarter inch thick. So I don't want to take much off in the center. Um, just need to get that smoothed and take just enough off where I know that it's not touching um, the base of my foot. I also don't want to remove any extra clay where my actual foot's going to be sitting. Most of the clay is going to be coming off in this area and this area here. So um, if you're just doing one or two plates, um, you know, you can just kind of put the, the foot where you think it feels nice. Um, what I do when I'm making sets of plates, um, like I said in the last video, this was one of 16 plates that I threw. So I, I set the foot rings all about the same size. So this is this caliper is set for eight inches. Um, so I'll just take a little bit off. So that I know where to put my calipers, if I've got the right amount off. 
and that's about right there. So I know I've got to take a little less than a finger width off. So I just start on the outside. You'll notice how nice that's curling up. This is just a little, there, it wants to break a little bit. So these are just a hair drier than perfect, um, but this is pretty close to amazing for trimming. Um, I do tend to trim just a little on the softer side than a lot of people prefer to. So this might be really nice for some people. Um, these Dolan tools are really great. You can sharpen them, but I've never had to really sharpen them too much. So I'm going right to that spot where I put the calipers. That's where the outside of my foot is. So I typically what I do is I do about 75 or 80% of my trimming on the outside that I need to get done and then I come into the middle. So a little more off out here. And you can see that I'm taking, the lugs are a different color and you can see I'm taking some of the lugs off when I go to trim all the way out to the edge. Um, you know, I throw a lot of extra clay on the rim and the edge and I wanna leave that nice and thick on the edge. Um, so when I go to get to the middle, a lot of times when you wire it off, it ends up with some goofy whatever's in the middle. So the trick is you'll have to have it spinning faster the closer you are to the center, and then I'll slow it down to about here, which is like, I don't know, maybe quarter pedal, quarter speed. So I'm at maybe half speed now, and I'm being really patient and just taking off a little bit at a time. And you notice I'm taking more off here than here because of this is ridge. So when I'm holding this, this arm is really tucked in tight to my side. I'm gonna move the camera here a little bit for you. So this arm is really tucked into my side tight. This hand's resting on the splash pan and I'm holding the tool. So I've got, you know, I'm forming a triangle basically. So my hands are connected, that's one point. This is on the splash pan and my elbows in my side. So it's like a triangle to keep it nice and sturdy. So I can hold it in one place, even if I have an uneven surface and then slowly move it. And I'll be taking off more clay as I get closer to the outside edge. And I'm just, keep trucking. I'm not worrying about all that's built up and my eyes, my tool is here, and my eyes are watching right behind the tool. So I'm moving nice and slow and steady until that foot's about the width that I want, which is right about there. Then I'll turn this on its side, so I'm using a wider profile. So I was using the kind of edge right here, and I'm turning it flat. And that's about good there. So now I'm switching to this tool. It's got this nice right angle to get up in the corners of the foot. So I'm putting the corner right in where I want it until that curve lines up with what I had already made. And then if you went you know, whatever the depth you have on the inside here, that's the depth you can have on the outside there. So whatever my depth is right here, I'll have the same depth on the outside. So, you know, typically you're trimming like this, you know, right at about like three or four o'clock on the plate. And normally you hold the tools like this. To get this right angle on the outside, I just flip it around in my hand Nice sturdy grip. I'm still supporting my hand with my left hand. And I'm letting my fingers drag on the plate here so I have a good um, reference. Your body is aware of where your other body parts are. It's called proprioception. Um, and that's, that's a really good thing so you know where you're putting your tools at. I'm just slowly moving down until that matches. So that would theoretically be, if the foot wasn't there, a continual curve. I'm gonna take just a hair more off. 
And then I'm gonna, I wanna have as little surface area in contact with the table essentially here. So a lot of beginners I see leave these really wide flat feet. So they'll just take this and they'll just flatten it out like this and say, okay, I made my foot, that's great. Um, the more surface area you have, the less likely it is to sit flat and the more likely it is to scratch whatever table it's sitting on. So if someone's got a nice dining table, um, I don't want this scratch in their dining table. So I'm gonna bevel both of the edges. And it doesn't look like a lot on the camera, but there's just a really slight bevel there and I can run my finger over it to just kind of smooth it out. And you're, I'm basically burnishing just where that would sit on the table a little bit to make sure that any grog that's in the clay gets pushed into the clay a little bit more. And I'm just gonna go over the surface one more time to clean up the trim lines and the drag marks. And I'll do the same on the outside. So I'm not taking a whole lot more off there that's just to really clean everything up, that last go around. And once you have the lugs off, I'm picking it up by the edges, flipping it over, and I, if I'm carrying my plates, I always try to carry them vertically like this, because it's gonna uh, put the least amount of stress on the plate and it shouldn't warp as much. So if you're firing with high or mid fire clay, um, you can actually bisque fire them like this in the kiln. That's how I bisque fire them all. I don't have issues with them warping. Um, if you're throwing relatively thin plates that have uh, no foot ring, so it's like a flat to the bot, bottom sort of base, and then it just like rounds up to like a thin rim, that rim could warp if you fire it like this, depending on your clay. Um, so the answer there would be to bisque it a little lower. Um, the couple of times that I have had some very slight warping at bisque temperature, it's flattened itself right out during the glaze firing. So that was not an issue. The last step with this plate, um, if you had any blemishes or marks on the surface or you needed to touch up the rim at all, now is the time to do that. But the last step is to take your stamp that I, where did I put my stamp? So just take my stamp and I put them right, by, right there. There you go. So enjoy trimming your plates. These will get set out upside down to dry. If you feel like your rims are dry, getting like, you know what, you can tell when the color of the clay starts getting lighter. If these are starting to get dry and there's still moisture in the clay, you can take a piece of plastic and just wrap it around the edge. We want the middle of the piece to dry first. This should also be the thinnest part of the pot. So this might be like a quarter inch or less even, three sixteenths maybe, thick here. Whereas the outside edge, it's a pretty substantial rim on these plates, but the rims and the foot are the thickest parts. Um, and I try to make my my foot similar thickness to the thick parts of the rim. So um, just a couple of considerations there. So these will get dried flat. I'm not gonna put a fan on them. I'm gonna let them dry nice and slow and I almost never get any sort of cracks uh, on my plates anymore. So um, I know cracks are a huge struggle with plates and so is warping. And the two big things, there's only two things you take away from the video. The two big things are try to handle the plates as little as possible. And when you are handling them, um, if you have them sandwiched between bats when you flip them or just make sure you're grabbing them as little as possible, just, you know, you cut it off and then you flip it over once and you let it sit there. Don't be moving it around a whole bunch. Let it sit there. And then once it's dry enough to trim, you're trimming it and then you're drying it upside down as well. Um, so that that can get, stay nice and even, doesn't warp, 
and the drying upside down, nice, slow, even drying is the key. So the two things are handle it as little as possible and we want it to dry evenly and slowly. So good luck with your plates. If you've got any questions, comments, concerns, or emotional outbursts, feel free to put them down in the comment section. I will definitely reply to them. And until next time, stay muddy.